Okay, so this is a 2008 MacBook 15 inch and it's a A20 2532A board and this has got liquid damage on it. You can actually see it's got to uh, run down the fan here across the board. and So uh, my notes actually say it turns on but it's also got liquid over so I'm going to go and strip this board out and I'm going to chuck it through my ultrasonic cleaner. Now I've got an ultrasonic cleaner, I can put it in there. So let's take this board out and uh, strip it down. This computer came without the bottom piece of casing, which is really irritating. Um, it's got the top panel, but not the bottom panel. So it makes it a bit hard to reset it without the bottom panel as well. So I'm hoping I can find one somewhere somewhat irritating. Oh yeah, it's got to take it into a little bit too. It's a little bit dirt in there. Not too bad, it's a little bit. Uh, some other ones down here that pop out. Now, I've not worked on one of these before. I've never taken a board out of this particular year before. I'm going to have to figure out a few things like exactly how it all goes together. You can see liquid's got behind there too. Uh, okay, it looks alright though. I think that's all the things here. Now this one's actually got crosshead screws instead of those bloody pentalobe things it uses on a lot of the newer maps. So easy to get out. There we go. So it was hidden flex right there. So what it was, this was catchy on that bottom edge, so I wouldn't pull over. But you can see how dusty and crappy that is, so I'll give all this a dust off, strip all this stuff off, and chuck it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Hopefully it lives okay. One gig. <laughs> so it's got two gig of RAM. I'll chuck it in with that board on it, because it, just, it needs cleaning, so this has got to come out though. Let's get this off. I'll put new heatsink on man on and stuff like that, as you would expect. My goal is to have a perfectly working, good condition machine at the end of this. You know, as is always my goal. Suitable for resale, so I can sell it on by having uh, resurrected it and prevented it from getting any worse and that sort of stuff. So once I put it through off Sonic, I suppose I'll be able to see if there's any major corrosion really but heat sink sensor cool and this is all like really dry so yeah that was definitely well in need of renewal all right let's just have a look on this side a little bit of corrosion here a bit around there as well so a lot of it's just dust baked on dust it's quite old no, it's not too bad around actually. Now I'm just getting a bit of a brush. It's actually not looking that bad. Very slight. I think mostly it's not that bad actually. It's looking okay. Right, so some discoloration around here. Get a different brush. If 
Probably nothing though. Just a little bit of corrosion there, almost nothing. Over there is a little bit, but again, almost nothing. And this side's actually looking pretty good. So it looks like it's basically got away with it. It's, it's only got very minor spills on it. It's almost like they actually had to sense the power of the thing off when it got the spill on it. It's a little bit up here. I think most of it, once I chuck it through the old Sonic, that should fix most of it, I reckon. There's nothing obviously bad. It's just really minor. So I'm only going to chuck this in the ultrasonic and we'll, I'll come back after I've done it. Alright, so it's been in the ultrasonic, now it's going to chuck it in the alcohol bath here and um, displace the water, which is uh, in the ultrasonic. It's a water based system, so chuck some fresh stuff in here. So the idea here is the alcohol will actually um, displace the water because it helps remove it from the water under, underneath all the chips and stuff like that. And then little bits and pieces go into. So we'll do that, we'll get rid of the water. Then I've got to just dry out some more, chuck it in a um, in a low temperature oven just to accelerate the drying process very slightly. So the idea is just to try and get all the water out of it now. Ultrasonic cleaner, which is water based. The stuff I'm using is Electrolube SWAS uh, cleaning solution, which is designed for really for flux. So it's water based, it's, like, it's more it's like a detergent really than anything. And you're supposed to flush it with water after that in order to um, to clean all that residue off from the actual ultrasonic cleaner. And then using the alcohol here to try and get all the water out of it. The water's looking pretty clean. Um, so all the bits which were quite ugly before but are not too bad now. So around here was quite ugly. Oh, it's getting shot, not dripping everywhere. So around here was quite ugly. So that's all looking really good now. Yeah, it's looking not, not bad at all. Now what was the other bit? The other bit was over here, wasn't it? And around here. So yeah, they're looking all right. But it'll look different once it dries out because you know having, having the board wet tends to hide anything which may be there out of the uh, oven to try and dry it out. It's been in there for about half an hour, I think. Yeah, it's all looking really nice. Back to how it should be. So I can't see any obvious you know, bad bits of corrosion here, which I have to retouch really up with the soldering iron tonight. Like. It's just, it, I think it escaped pretty easily actually. I think it was uh, pretty minor. So we'll put it back together. So get the right screwdriver. It's always the wrong screwdriver. Yeah. Really close look, just to be absolutely sure, I've definitely not missed anything. So there was a bit of corrosion around here and that looks really good now. There was a bit just there. Looks fine, it's just really really minor. I don't think there's a problem there. Um, yeah, I think it actually escaped pretty well. So let's just get some uh, thermal paste. It's amazing this tube is going forever. We'll run out one day. Oh, this might be it. Yeah. Once it spreads out, it should be fine. But that's just about into. Alright. Here we out of it. I've already cleaned the um the heat sinks themselves. So I'll drop that back onto here. It certainly looks a lot better than it did. The real question is, that, will it still work? I mean, it worked before, but um, I didn't trust it with the dirt and residue on the ball. I just didn't want to leave it that way. Okay, that should be fine. So I've given the housing a bit of a clean, as well as those connections which I identified as having a little bit of liquid damage on them. I've given a bit of a clean up with my fiberglass brush, and they've all cleaned up nicely. I've given a bit of a brush around inside here and got rid of some of the crap, but don't mind to see a mess left in the machine, if I can avoid it. In case it's caused a problem or something, but I don't think it will there, but it just doesn't look very nice. Thank you.
Okay, that's everything plugged in. Let's put the RAM back in. Actually, it's got two different RAMs. I know it's a, they're actually they're different. That's a 4 gig and a 1 gig. Okay, so it's got 5 gig of RAM. It's a weird quantity. Also, 1 gig is the original. Uh, what are these things? PC38500. PC38500. DDR3. Probably just leave that one out, couldn't I? Just have four gig and have done with it. Five seems a bit weird. I'll just, I'll just put four in. I'll leave that one out as a spare. I might need that for something else one day. Okay, so whoever worked on this machine before me, um, they actually kept the screws, which is nice. I do need to try and find a button cover. So the original one, just, it didn't come with it, which is really disappointing, really, you know? Obviously lost it or thought oh, it's, it's never going to work again anyway, so threw it away. Probably the person who took the hard drive out probably just discarded it, thinking it's rubbish anyway, and threw it out. Not realising that these things can often be salvaged if you're careful. It's likely the person who took the hard drive out, which is likely the owner of the computer, or the original owner of the computer, whoever that was. Because this, this was an um, insurance claim for, uh, for liquid damage. So it's sold as an insurance claimed item. So um, so I don't have a hard drive for this. Well, I do, but not set up for it. So I'm just going to power it up and we'll see what happens. Uh, battery status. Probably can't see it actually. Here we go. Flashing one. So the battery obviously works. It's obviously very flat. So let's get a charger hooked up. Got one right here. Is that the right one? It is. I think. There we go. All right, so we've got a green light on the charger, and it's gone orange. So that's charging. Great. That's a good start. Let's uh, see if the thing can actually power up. Now let's plug in a system boot disk. Let's try. I have to check see which one it is. It's one of these. I'll plug my test drive in, and we'll use that. We'll do a hardware test on it. Okay, so either wants uh, 3S123 or 3S132, depending on which version this is. 
I don't know which version it actually is, which is part of the problem. So we'll try one, then we'll try the other. All right. Uh, hopefully the keyboard works. The CD drive is running. Screen is on. Option key obviously works. It pulled up the disc options. The screen's really dirty. Right, so we want. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do an OS boot up. I'm gonna do a EFI boot up because it's quicker. I think that's what I want. One, two, three. Let's find out. Does not support this machine. Okay. Trackpad works, yes. Restart. Do it again. So I must want 132. The CD drive's not sounding very happy though. Struggling. So you want EFI 132, which I think is that one. Yep. This should be the right one. Here we go, it's in. Let's turn some of these off see me better. So I won't test memory, I'll just test everything else. Memory takes a long time to test. Um, I'll do that properly later on. Come on, pick up. Come on. Scroll slightly more. There we go. The other test I want to do, no memory tests. We'll just test everything else. Okay. Start it. Let's see what happens. Oh, it failed something. What did it fail? Left heat pipe. Ah. GPU core sensors reading below the low limit. So heat pipe and GPU. So GPU zero die, reading above the high limit, which means it's probably open circuit. And left heat pipe, reading above the high limit. Again, it means it's probably open circuit. Which is that connector. Oh, did I plug it back in? I think I forgot to plug that back in. All right, um, and GPU voltage. Voltage is reading below the limit. Interesting. Is there a GPU issue? Potentially there is. Okay, well I've forgotten to plug a bloody sensor in for a start, so I shut it down. I don't remember plugging that sensor back in. I probably didn't do it. Let's open it all back up again. I won't bother recording that. You don't need to see that. Okay, yep, there we go, I got the board out, and yep, sure enough, I forgot to plug that flex in. That was pretty dumb, wasn't it? But that GPU overheat thing is concerning. I didn't want to risk unplugging that cable there again, because it's, it's so fragile to start with, I didn't want to risk damaging it by unplugging it, so I just left it unplugged in. Let's try this again, this time I'm going to do a operating system boot. So it's still the same testing, just using an OS system instead of uh, EFI system. It means it can tell us all the sensor values and make sure the sensors are okay and says what's actually seeing. So I plugged that one in which I'd missed. Oh, I want this one. That one there. So that should at least be one less issue, but there's still that weirdness with the GPU V core being low apparently. So that is marginally concerning. We'll see what happens. So the voltage issue, not temperature issue, so it could be a supply or maybe a bad capacitor somewhere. Oh, you see that? Little GPU glitch there. That's interesting. Maybe it's got an issue. Clock is set at the wrong time. Yeah, that's fine. I know that. And it's already started testing. I don't want testing memory. So this is an early 2009, not a 2008. Uh, let's say MUX switching has failed, didn't switch error. Interesting. So I'm doing continue testing. Turn off memory. 
there was a version which had um, I told you all the, all the sensor values and stuff so we'll try it again without memory and without stopping I'll leave it going I'll see what comes up okay so I'm just going to make a note of what these tests were to fail so the first one that came up was a MUX switching fail didn't switch on which is the GMUX switch to EG which I mean I believe is external graphics and verify and it failed right so error 28 but MUX switching failed I believe that means it's trying to switch to external graphics and it couldn't do it but I think there's a reason for that. Now if I scroll down further, next second error that came up is video controller internal test. Fill rect 2D acceleration test. Test hardware accelerated fill rect by filling screen with many rectangles, calculating checksum and comparing actual against expected something or other. It's gone off the screen. And as a error 72, 2D acceleration test failed. Okay. It doesn't specify which graphics it is using with its internal graphics or what but anyway um, so you go down a bit further and the next one that failed is this one here GPU zero die analog temperature test error unable to read sensor test failed so there's no temperature coming back from the GPU All right. so far everything's relating to the GPU Next test, which I think might be the key to what's going on. Error three, sensor reading below low volts, uh, low point. Right, so this is voltage GP zero core voltage test one. Sensor reading within operating range, but check whether sensor reading within operating range is not. Error sensor reading below low point zero point zero zero. So I think what that means is that the GPU has got a voltage rail missing, and as a result it's basically not turning on properly and that would cause all these other errors to pop up so I think that's what's wrong is a, a GPU voltage and it shows three tests failed but I'm sure it's all four results hold on sensor reading below low point so it's GPU voltage GPU temperature video controller through X and MUX switching so that's four errors actually so it's got one error here it's initial starting up and then the other one later on interesting but it's all related to graphics so um, I believe there's a voltage rail problem so I was going to shut this down now I've documented what the errors are with this video and uh, I've taken some photos as well anyway it works apart from uh, graphics problems so it's hopefully not too bad